A true special grade clash. Now, I want to make this video as soon as possible before the inevitable Yuki is going to die or Kenjaku is going to die as Gege serves us this four course meal over these coming weeks. However, in my opinion, this is the closest fight between two special grades until we got something such as Hakari and Kashimo in terms of we don't know what the outcome of the fight will be. But I will tell you now, Kenjaku will win and Yuki will survive. And first, I will tell you why Kenjaku will win. First, his merger plan. Everything's been hyping up him to merger with Tengen and it's such a huge plot point we expect to occur. In my opinion, it would be very weird for us to never see this scenario occur, especially if we go back to Hidden Inventory and multiple arcs showcasing this potential plotline. Now, it also doesn't make sense for him to lose. We haven't seen his full arsenal in terms of combat or even see what the true nature of his curse technique is and how he can have multiple techniques because we are currently unaware if he got them all from just cursed spirit manipulation. And then Kenjaku's plot as well. With so many characters, whether that is Yuji, Sukuna, Tengen and a potential backstory to come, there's way too much to explore from his point of view for him to lose in this clash unless he was forced back and then made to re-strategize. But I feel that'd be such a huge L for Kenjaku which doesn't seem likely with the way he has portrayed himself in the story thus far. Moreover, his combat prowess in my opinion, and I'm firm on him being the current strongest combatant available with Sukuna being restricted by Yuji, I just believe he will have enough to deal in what will be one of the greatest fights we'll see with his clash with Yuki. Now, why will Yuki survive? This is the first time seeing her in combat, and it's not going to be a Rengoku situation because in my opinion, it just wouldn't make sense. We need to explore more of her being a previous Star Plasma Vessel and potentially why she acts the way she does, even though some parts can be inferred due to her recent conversation with Tengen. Now, what do I mean by that? Potentially with her mindset, with her disbelief and obviously in way in which Tengen has decided to act out in the worst case scenario for humanity, her kind of persona with not taking missions is because obviously the Jujutsu High asked for specific Star Plasma vessels so she could have continuous beef with them. In addition, she seems as someone who is independent and focused on her own ideologies of removing cursed energy. And that could be another thing, but these are all just speculations and I believe a thorough look into her character is expected and this leads nicely to a potential backstory or something that can explain why she now has the mindset of removing cursed energy. It's a complete drastic change to the current world and everything we got is just predictions like I've just talked about due to her being a previous star plasma vessel. This nicely ties in with somebody such as why did she teach somebody such as Toto if she didn't want him to have anything to do with Jujutsu High. It seems kind of contradictory with her now mindset of removing cursed energy. So that whole kind of plot point is something big significance to me and things that I would like to see Yuki be explored upon. And this is also her first real fight. We're going to see her techniques and if it was all for set up for her to be killed It'd be a waste of a character who has numerous interesting things about her. And then finally, her meeting with Maki through Heavenly Restriction. If we go all the way back into the Head and Eventory arc, she wanted to meet Toji to see how Heavenly Restriction and experiment potential. And now with Maki reaching that level, this is another plot point that looks likely to be explored and why I'm very firm on Yuki will survive regardless of the result of this conflict. And then the final final reason is I rate her heavy and I have major Yuki stocks and I personally would be disappointed to see her die in her first real fight after so much intrigue with her character all the way back to her first appearance with meeting with the fact that we realized she was Toto's trainer. Now fight predictions. Before I touch on that, I'm going to make a wild claim. So get ready. That is, this will not be the first conflict and this is the closest thing we'll get to a Mahito and Yuji rivalry. Now first hear me up. Back in 136 is their first mini clash 
and I know they didn't fight, but the fact that Kenjaku decided to leave when she pulled up showcases to us he at least values her strength to a high degree. But what interested me was their mindset differences in optimizing curse energy and removing curse energy. This is further enforced in chapter 202 when Kenjaku said he was surprised that Yuki knew his plan would require the consumption of the population as a curse energy source and he was happy to see she shared similar ideology as him. This in my opinion is important and shows Kenjaku holds her to a high regard as someone who could show a similar mindset as this mad scientist yet chooses to have the opposite ideology in terms of the use of curse energy. This reminds me greatly of Yuji and Mahito who had opposite ideologies on curses versus humans and I think it would be a great avenue to keep these two people antagonizing against each other in their clash of ideals. She also showcases a keen theme of individuality. As seen in chapter 138, she states, I'm not necessarily on your side. I'm just a humble beauty who wants to eradicate curse energy. This further pushes the nice parallels of Yuki driving her goal to go and remove curse energy and Kenjaku trying to satisfy his curiosity on the potential of curse energy and it sets up nicely for these characters to clash on multiple occasions within the story. Moreover, Yuki is the oldest special grade and by reputation alone she is going to be someone special and if we take Kenjaku's statement of overthrowing a country which I think was chosen perfectly in anticipation of this clash. In addition, since she is the first special grade in theory, she was the benchmark for this terminology of overthrowing a nation and further pushes my Yuki stocks to the roof. She can showcase things to allow her to hold her own in this clash and will probably be the first person to push Kenjaku to an extreme which we haven't currently seen in this series. And this moves nicely to my prediction that it will be an intense clash but Kenjaku will find a way to win this clash. He will showcase his arsenal of abilities and will finally learn the true nature of his technique. I also believe Gege will cook with the power system and we may see either a maximum technique or a domain expansion or even both which be the icing on the cake on what could potentially be the best fight in the series. But why do I think a domain? I believe personally, all special grades should have a domain. I know Ghetto potentially didn't have one, but the fact that he could capture spirits with domains means he could utilize these capabilities. Now with Yuki being someone who taught Toto a simple domain, as well as what we can say in theory the makings of Black Flash, her knowledge on Jujutsu must be high, as well as her referencing Kenjaku having a domain himself. This makes me believe she has one and will finally get a good understanding on domain battles and what it means for the most refined domain to work in its totality. I know we got brief showcases with Gojo vs Jogo and Dagon vs Megan, but this being two special grades, it will give us a greater understanding and I believe Gege will cook differently for this special grade clash. But that will wrap up nicely on my thoughts. I'm super excited to see this fight showcase and I believe as a person who has major stocks in these two characters, I do believe they will survive this encounter and it will be one of the greatest battles we've seen in Jujutsu Kaisen. Regardless of this, let me know your opinions down below. What do you think will happen in terms of the outcome of this fight? And do you agree with the plot points that I have brought upon to showcase why Kenjaku will win and why Yuki will survive. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Obviously check out the links all down below and check out my second channel. I'll be starting a new series be called Blaziken Debates. Where we'll be debating different anime topics on a wide range of anime and mangas. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, make sure to check out the channel. But thank you guys for watching.